So again, I think before we go to verse number um, 21, uh, I just wanted to say something to us, um, again, some questions. Because we are talking about evaluating yourself in your practice. Um, definitely it's so important to evaluate ourselves, <coughs> but also we shouldn't be too harsh on yourself. Because especially in the West, I know that that seems to be the case, mm -hmm. where people beat up themselves saying, I'm so bad practitioner and this and that. I can't stop my anger and I'm supposed to not to have anger and that. So again, um, that's another <coughs> thing that we have to evaluate, but we have to be gentle, with gentleness. Just as when you try to help and evaluate your children, in their study and things. We have to help them to evaluate whether they are making progress or not, but you have to be very gentle and not be too harsh on them. It will be very it will have a negative consequences if you become too if you use too hard uh, hard um, harshness in terms of evaluating your children or students. And same with yourself. That is how you have to treat yourself. As long as we are making some progress compared to what before, for over the years, then you should be happy. And even though we are not perfect, um, and I'm good at excusing myself in that. Uh, so that was uh, that was one of the things um, because um, yeah that was one I think um, we have to evaluate but we have to evaluate with gentleness and that was hmm? the verse number twenty one furthermore suffering ha has good qualities no oh, twenty second as I do not become angry with a great source of suffering such as jaundice then why be angry with intimate creatures? They too are provoked by conditions. Again, again it's changing our perspective by looking. Of course, when someone, if someone uh, engages in certain activities which brings harm, pain to ourselves, then we get easily angry to them. For their actions, because that action brought us harm and pain, suffering, either oneself or our families, our friends, so forth. And so, therefore, we feel we are justified to get angry and act that angry back. Um, so here he is saying. Um, so of course, again, he, as we have mentioned before, anger is not a um, healthy and positive, helpful to one side and other, so we have to let go of those anger. And so there are, uh, how to let go of anger and then thinking from different perspective. For example, when we get sickness, okay, physical sickness, or like even like let's say natural disaster, like what happened uh, like in the Nepal, for example, people doesn't get angry to the whatever energy that that create a earthquake, do you get it? Do people get angry to that? that? No, even though it brought such a in <coughs> immense pain, suffering in their life, totally destroyed some of family, everything, everything, everything they had gone. Some people, nothing. All their family members gone, all their earnings gone, everything's gone. But they are not angry to the natural, to the nature. No one is really, really angry to the nature, the energy which produced that. Same way when we are physically sick, when we are, when we are not feeling well, whatever that sickness is, we don't get angry to our body. We don't get angry to uh, the, 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 such as, of course, in Tibetan, um, 
I think jaundice is not in Tibetan medicine. I guess it's the same in uh, Ayurveda. I don't know exactly, but in Tibetan medicines, the three men are the source of all other disease. Lungji uh, begins from wind. Uh, one is called bell, tiba, bell, bile, bile, and then uh, what was the other? Lung ti bacon, bacon, flame, flame, yeah. So these three are the main source of all other disease, and these three and others when the the element are not in balance, then of course sickness comes. So here is saying we get sickness and we get pain, suffering because of sickness, and all these are produced by such as those three men bell and wind and plane or not being uh, in um, balance of the four energies but we don't get angry to them do you get it we don't get angry to the four elements which which goes in, in balance and that is why we have or any of those uh, three let me see the other uh, other translation and so so if we don't get angry to that even though it produces us so much pain, suffering, why do we get it, get angry to someone if, even if they produce harm, and pain, and suffering? It doesn't make sense. If we, get, we, if we do get angry to the other person because of creating pain and suffering, then we should also be get angry to those things. But So it is saying it doesn't make sense to get angry to someone because he or she produces us brought us some pain and suffering and not getting angry to someone something which even the same thing so it is uh, and so then we might think but no no there is a difference we might think is there is a difference that natural disasters or such as this they have no intentions they have no intentions uh, to kind of bring us harm um, they didn't do intentionally in that sense. So here, uh, Shandeva saying, even if someone has bring you harm, pain, suffering, <coughs> not because they really want it, because they are provoked by the delusions, because of driven by their delusion, that's why they are doing that. So if you really want to get angry, you get angry to their delusions, not the persons, because the delusions is controlling the persons. The person is the slave of that delusions, and that's why he or she is acting that way. And delusion is the boss, remote control, controller of the persons. So if you want to get anger to because there is someone uh, uh, controlling that, then you should be angry to that person's delusion, not the person's. Because that person's actions of whatever he or she is acting is provoked by his or his own delusions. Yeah. <clears throat> here it is, uh, here it is translated as a bell. I am not angry with my bell and other bile and other humors, 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 fertile source of suffering and pain. So why should living beings give offense? They likewise are impelled by circumstances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So circumstances such as delusions. They have been driven by those delusions. So, so again, by Yeah. That just denies any existence of free will or choice in people. And uh, that's a long story. Uh huh. I mean, that they're automatically, that all their actions are automatic, just like the ones that are caused by bile, etc., and humor. Um, I don't know the answer to the question, but there's a lot of thinking that people have choice, 
and that they're not the same as those. And so I had to disagree with that statement. Uh -huh. Now, usually, um, it doesn't make much sense to get mad at people because they are kind of, they're either um, struggling along or something. They made, some, they made, made, a, made a mistake or they, something like that. There's no question that sometimes people hurt you intentionally. Mm -hmm, but, uh, mm -hmm. That's um, um, not a very good choice that I'm making. Oh, there is no doubt about that. <laughs> there is no doubt about that. And as you said, there is choice to some extent. But at the same time, a lot of time, people just respond. They don't have time to make the choice. It's it's almost like automatic. Certain situation comes and boom, your delusions boom because we are so used to it, so familiarized with it, because of the imprint is so strong, and that is why after some time you regret about that. You regret about that. If you was kind of intentionally you are planning, you wouldn't regret it for what you did. But a lot of time. And in that moment, we lose our mind. Of course, we can learn how to not to lose that mind, and that comes with a lot of practice over the time. But a lot of people <laughs> does not have um, exposed to those practices. Even those like ourselves who are exposed to that practice, and even we try our best to practice, sometimes <laughs> we just burst out and we lose our mind and we act in that way. <coughs> but that wasn't intentionally. That wasn't intentionally. In some cases, yes, it was intention. I've been thinking how to get to you, <laughs> how to push the burden uh, and all everything. Yes. And there will be that part as well. But a lot of cases, it is like that. A lot of cases, it's just you can't you have no control, you just burst out. And so, yeah. So, I guess there is some, um, as you said, there are choices in some cases, in some choices, it is just kind of almost like automatic. Unless you reach the point where you have practiced well enough, then you can really kind of control and not let yourself in that. But for a lot of people, it just seems like automatic. Those, especially those. Still, it's so good to get mad at Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. The point here is just <coughs> we're thinking from different angles and not to get angry. So that is the whole thing. Angry is not well. So how can we stop angry? And so maybe we should think this way and have this perspective. Think from this way and have this perspective. Think from this way and have this perspective. And all this with this perspective, then maybe it will help you to not to get so mad and so angry easily over the time with the continuous practice. Mm. <laughs> then verse number 23, although they are not wished for, those sickness arises. And likewise, although they are not wished for, those disturbing concept, conception forcefully arises. Hmm? So again, nobody wish, nobody wants and wish sickness, disease. But and we try very hard not to get sick. Despite that, we get sick time to time, time to time. We get sick time to time due to our lifestyle, uh, due to genes, uh, genetic, genetics, uh, due to uh, diet and so forth. We do get, uh, due to our um, many different cause and conditions, due to many cause and conditions, immediate and long-term cause and conditions, uh, even though we don't want the disease, we do get those sickness and disease time to time. In the same way, Every human being, when they are born, they are not born with such an anger and then uh, with the functioning to disturb, disturb others, 
to harm others, to bring, create destruction, uh, to create anger, hatred, and we are not born that way. When you may not, the basic human being is very love and compassion, but over the time, we, through different environment, different circumstances, then even though you didn't wish for it, those anger, frustrations, <coughs> hatred, crisis. So if we understand that, then maybe we will be able to let it go and to be able to forgive for their mistakes, knowing that the basic of that person is good, is not evil. Even his action might seem evil, a lot of distractions, but inside that evilness, in, inside the badness, <laughs> there is a goodness in that. So therefore, you lose less, you have more hope. Be trans to, to be able to transform such individuals because there is the potential basis for transformations. All these negativities that he or she is creating is kind of acquired mm -hmm. through the process of growing due to different circumstances, uh, environment and so forth. So with that understanding, um, then we, we let it go and we, uh, we don't hold so much anger and hatred to such people. Because it is not that they wanted to get angry and they were trying very hard to get angry. Cause and condition comes, boom! If, if we, for example, each of us, <coughs> ask ourselves, do I want to get angry? Do I feel effort to get angry? Conscious, conscious effort, practice to get angry, hatred. No, we don't. We don't want that anger. We don't want that hatred. We know it is not helpful. It's not good. But Time to time we just burst out, we lose our mind, we get angry when certain cause and condition comes together. So, so therefore, when someone acts in that way, we try to put yourself in that person's shoes and try to understand that. For example, there, is, uh, there will be an instant where I don't mean to harm anyone and someone who is, whom I even really care, love someone, but due to certain circumstances I lost my mind and that anger arises and I did something to someone who I love very much and I feel very bad about it, I regret very bad, bad about it. I didn't mean to do that. But at that moment, I lost my mind and anger arises, not because I wish for it. I was, talking, I was trying very hard not to allow my anger to arise, even not only I didn't wish, I was even trying. You are even trying very hard through your practice not to allow yourself to get under the anger. But it just boom. Certain circumstances, situation, it just boom. And so, in that cases, not because you are a bad person, and you meet you, it's not because I'm at that time because I'm a bad person and I mean to harm others. Because I lost my mind and that is how I acted. Same way, someone is acting to me now, in that way, and I feel that he or she is trying to harm me and create all these things and intentionally that 
But maybe it's just like one of those instant I love myself, not because I want it. Because he or she lost her mind. And that's why he or she acting that way. So if you understand that, then again it's much it's, it's, it makes us easier to let go of the our bad feeling, negative feelings, because that is not helpful for oneself or others. So is the whole practice is learning how to let go of those bad feelings, negative feelings, unhealthy feelings, as quick as possible. And so this is again one way of thinking, to let it go and understand. Yes? Um, I've been working with that a good bit lately, just what you're saying. And I, I think I've come to realize that I might have some buttons that were maybe pre-installed in me that I'm trying to uninstall that have to do with certain things that bother me, like lying, people lying to you, you know, you find out about it. Or people misusing your, your things. And I, I realized that if I become angry at them when I discover these things, it's only me that, that hurts afterwards. You know? So. I'm really working at like trying to figure out how to uninstall those buttons. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it, it seems to be working a little bit anyway. So you so you are trying to get some of the screws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Using yeah, like screwdrivers and things to <laughs> uninstall. That's good. Do you have any screwdrivers I could borrow? <laughs> I have to go in the seat. In one of the Walmart. <laughs> I can bring from Walmart. Any place but Walmart. <laughs> yes. Um, to, to follow your Nepal example, um, the people weren't angry necessarily at, at the actual um, earthquake, but there was a lot of anger for the government for towards the government yeah. because of um, so that that's an example of, of in the moment kind of thing that's driving them. I mean, they wouldn't necessarily be mad at the government, but, but because they've lost everything, they're yeah, not yeah. getting any shelter or food or, or anything, um, that's the button that was pushed. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, that is the thing, I mean. Mm -hmm. So again, I mean, uh, it is kind of, I mean, it's just uh, in interesting, you know, how we respond. Normally, we get angry because we feel that <coughs> someone is brought a harm or suffering but that is not always the case like this situation itself it is the what it brought us to so much pain but we don't seem to get angry to it so it is just kind of a lot of time we don't even think about that way no nor this and think about that do you get to what I mean so he has thought a lot about it and how we respond differently to do two different things even though the result was more or less same, harm and destructions and pain to yourself. So he is trying to kind of, if we have the capacity, that is the point, we have the capacity not to get angry to them, even something which has bring us so much pain and suffering, the natural disaster, let's say. Okay? Earthquake. It brought so much pain, destroyed everything, but people didn't get angry to that person. Uh, to that situation. Somehow they were able to accept it. What it shows that we do have the capacity not to get angry to something which bring us so much harm, pain, destructions. If we have that capacity to deal with that, we should have also capacity to deal with someone, to person, in intimate. So again, here is showing that we do, what it shows is we do have the capacity that we don't have to be so <coughs> angry and agitated because something leads us in so much harm, uh, pain and destructions. It's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting how much destruction it has brought to them They were sad, 
there was pain, there was pain, there is suffering, there was, but there was no anger towards that. Of course now they are having anger to the government because the relief was not distributed quick enough and all these kind of things. There is that things happening, but there was sense of pain, helpless, maybe some hopeless, so much suffering, but there was no anger to us, even though it has destroyed everything. So, so there is capacity to do that, because it is perspective. Because it's perspective, because you see it's a natural. It's something natural. Once you see that perspective is a natural, then you are able to uh, kind of let go and not to have the anger, despite all these unpleasant feelings. So if we can change our perspective with other situations which we are unable to let it go now, we should also be able to let it go just like that. We can feel the pain, we can feel the suffering, but not be angry, agitated. That's the whole thing, yes? When you say anger, are you including things like depression, anxiety, and fear? Not exactly, no. I mean, those, those will come. It, it will be a kind of, a lot of those are kind of related. A lot of those emotions are related. But um, when we talk about anger, we are just talking about that particular uh, mental state. We are not talking about uh, the fear, the anxiety, uh, the depression, which are other mental states, which is very much related with anger and so forth, vice versa, fear leading to anger uh, and so forth, um, and leading to depression and so forth. So, but yeah, when when he is referring here, he is referring mainly at this point, particularly that mental state of the anger. Hmm? Then verse number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without thinking, I shall be angry. People become angry or with no resistance. Without thinking, I shall produce myself. Likewise, anger itself is produced. So, again, it's quite a little bit similar to what we just mentioned in the first verses. The anger just arises, not because we wish for it, and we put conscious effort to develop that anger. It just arises due to certain circumstances. Neither the anger thinks that I'm going to put, I'm going to arise in it just it just arise just as just as the earthquake didn't have an intention to kind of produce that result. It just kind of is a reaction of that energy. In the same way the anger doesn't think that I'm going to arise and disturb this and that, but the 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 consequences of that anger, of that anger energy is distractive in that way. And so neither yourself, neither the anger had the wish to arise, but they just arise. Um, so again, I think one of the things I think we have to remind ourselves all the time is that we know with our own experience, we have studied a lot about those teachings that anger is not healthy and good. And we have tried in our practice over many years, trying to decrease, trying to reduce some level of the anger through different practices. Despite that, we know it is so not so easy. Despite that, still we lose our mind time to time. Still anger arises from time to time. So imagine the majority of the people who have no idea that this anger is how distracted for themselves. A lot of people are not aware of that. A lot of people are not aware, not, not only they are unaware, a lot of people even thought 
I think anger is positive. Positive, healthy. So, under such circumstances, and of course, because they are not, so they have no practice to try to reduce it. So when they are not doing that, then of course people do get under the control of anger very, very easily from time to time. And as a result of that, then they engage into very un, unhelpful, unhealthy speech, physical expressions, and so forth. So if we understand it, then maybe we have, it allow us to kind of let go of a little bit of that. It's like in uh, people react in because they are in such a circumstances. If they have different circumstances, they will not react in that way. Do you get it, what I mean? So when you, de you, when you understand that, it's easy to let it go. In my life, um, what I've done or I'm playing with now is that I try to um, know ahead of time, you know, where my vulnerabilities are. Like, in, in other words, um, the things that I'm adverse to, that the, 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 this, where my buttons are, and, and or the things that I'm attached to. Either way, and and then and then um, with, then I keep that mindful every day. You know, like 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 okay, these are the things that could get me, you know, um, um, so I use discipline or whatever and just know, and then you can catch it, you know, like you can say, aha, there it is, it's starting to arise, you know, and, and you don't, you've already done the work, if you see what I mean, mm -hmm. before it even happens, if, a little bit, so mm -hmm. that when it happens you can go, ah, there it is, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep. Yes. I think one distinction is that people find it uh, easier to, or more, people are more likely to get angry at something that they think has a consciousness behind it, like a person or, or a government or something like that. And when it's like a natural phenomenon where they feel there's no consciousness behind it, they know automatically it's futile to get mm -hmm. angry at something without a consciousness. But as you're saying, uh, when people are acting out of delusion, then basically they really they don't have any free. They're they're abandoning their free will when they're acting out of delusion. And basically, what I think this teaching is saying is that we need to use our free will <coughs> to avoid that automatic reaction. Um, well, from your from your side, I think that is that is the point. That is, but here also he is saying, to some extent, he is saying there is no free will. So therefore, you have to let it go. That is the whole practice is about, because he is saying the delusion is the one who is ruling the person, not the person. The, instead of we having control of our mind. Our mind is controlling us. Mm -hmm. What we do, how we think, how we speak, everything. Our mind is controlling us. For most of us, unless someone has practiced and reached a state where they have total control over their mind. For a lot of ord just ordinary beings, our mind controls our life. It's as simple as that. And our mind is controlled by the delusions. Again, we know that. Our, our mind is controlled by the delusions. So in a sense, to some degree, the person has no control. Unless through practice they have reached that state. So that is, so with that understanding that people does not really understand until they reach a certain point, they really do not have control of delusion, and delusion controlling them. So therefore, you learn how to not to have 
negative feelings, thoughts toward the persons as much as possible. That's one way of letting go. It helps to let it go. If we think that way, if we think that they have total freedom and they are making those choices, then it's very difficult to let it go. Do you get it? It's, for example, it's the same thing with the, uh, with the whole situation in Nepal at the moment. I think to some degree, the government is, uh, what do you call, um, there's some negligent or maybe not proper planning or not having the right uh, decisions or whatever, all these things involved there. Com yeah, incompetent, incompetent, incompetent. To some extent, they are also um, what do you call um, by what do you call what was the the type of handicapped by sudden the magnitudes of the earthquake, not having uh, enough uh, helicopters, uh, all these things. So it took them. <coughs> It wasn't easy to reach them immediately, kind of there. So there is both playing or that. There is human and also there is to some... So if, if I understand that, that definitely there was some natural incompetence and everything, or corruptions and everything, at the same time there were some other things which... that they were handicapped by many things. So then I could still have anger but not so strong. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. But if I don't see that part, then I could be incredibly very mad and angry. My anger increases. So this is the whole thing. I mean, it is the whole thing. Um, um, so to some, extent, to some extent, I think we have uh, no freedom at the moment. We can get freedom from these delusions. There's no doubt about that. We can overcome that delusion, we can have control over that, but at the moment we, are, we have not reached that state. And so understanding all other persons are in that state, why that's that they're acting. So therefore it helps us to let it go and not, even if we do have anger, it's not so strong. And then it helps us to let it go faster. Yes? I want to say two things. One is about the, the Nepalese situation. I, I heard this morning that the airport was closed now because the tarmac was totally ruined by the heavy aircraft constantly landing with the provisions. So this is another problem for them. Mm -hmm. And on the point that we were discussing, I think that maybe people don't really know what delusion means. And perhaps you could give us a good definition of that. I mean, we have our idea, but if you would give us a, a good definition, maybe we would better be able to deal with it. Well, I think um, from, from Buddhist uh, scriptures, um, where they talk about the different mental state, mind and mental factors, uh, they explain about six root delusions, I mean, delusions is kind of an English word which has been kind of different translators used. In Sanskrit, it's klasha, in Tibetan, nyomo, but in English, because there is not an exact word, so different translators have used different. Um, some use delusions, some use afflictive emotions. Some of in this year, you often see distractive conceptions. Uh, uh, in some, they use distractive emotions. So there are so many different translators, used by different translators, because there is not exact uh, words. And so, so I think that when we use here, it might be different than the way you use in your normal English terms. Yeah. Uh, so in Buddhist, uh, we explain about six delusions, 20 secondary delusions um, within the different mental state. And then uh, delusion is explained is a state of mental factors. When it arises, it disturbs your mind. Mm -hmm. It disturbs your mind mm -hmm. and take away your um, 
peace, calmness. And so it is a state of mind which makes you very uh, disturbed. So that is what, what it is, uh, how it is defined. Uh, the delusions, how it is uh, defined as that, like that. Um, so, yeah. He has a, on page uh, 170 in the book, he talks of the klesha is mental factor that upon occurring in the mind as a function of producing turmoil in and a lack of control over the psyche. And it's uh, number seven uh, okay. in the notes in the back of this book. And he's got more than he yeah. Okay. Klesha. Mm -hmm. So I think um, So I think we'll stop here. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, due to the, all the positive um, karma virtues that we have created once in other three and three times, may the Dharma flourish and give it countless sense and beings. May his own Dharma, the Dharma Sabarambu, have a long, healthy life, all their wishes be fulfilled. May all the people who are not feeling well, sick, physical, emotional, mental, may they be free from all the sickness, have a healthy and long life. May all sentient beings who are having a different obstacle challenge in their life, may they recover from all these obstacles and challenges immediately, and all, all their wishes be fulfilled upon the Dharma. May all sentient beings who have died, wherever they are now, may they find a peace, have a perfect mental birth, meet the Dharma, actualize the Dharma, and achieve their full potential. May each and every sentient being be able to actualize, fully develop, the Bodhicitta and the wisdom understanding emptiness as quick as possible. Those who have already actualized not diminish but increase more and more. May our prayer and dedication be the same as the, all the incredible prayer and dedication made by all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Due to this time of merit, which empty from his own side, may I, which empty from his own side, achieve fully enlightenment, which empty from his own side, and lead all sentient beings to fully enlightened state, which empty from his own side. Okay. Page. 235 for the general dedication prayers. We'll do the first two in Tibetan. <coughs>
do these in Tibetan also.
and try to cultivate and generate a good intention, motivation. <coughs> Maybe we can think, contemplate the meaning of my life, the purpose of my life. It's not only to be just concerned with my own pain and my own suffering, that would be too limiting our own potential. So the meaning of my life, purpose my life, is to be able to reach out, to be able to help, and be some to have some contributions towards happiness of all other sentient beings as much as we can. The <clears throat> In order to be able to help, contribute, other sentient beings in the most effective way, in the most beneficial way. I must achieve my full potential, the fully awakened state as quick as possible. And to be able to do that, I must reduce and gradually eliminate all the athletic emotions, <coughs> all the delusions, all the obscurations. For that I need to practice medit meditation, contemplation, reflection, and so forth. For that we need to be reminded of those practices again and again by listening, reading, engaging, discussion, reflection, so forth, again and again. Therefore, I'm going to <coughs> engage in listening and discussion so that I can be reminded of those core <coughs> practices. So, I'm inspired to practice so that I can make positive changes, transformation in myself, in my life, and in the life of others. And may I be most beneficial to all sentient beings all the time. Page 76, the Heart Sutra. I prostrate to the hour of the Jan. Thus did I hear at one time that Bhagavan was dwelling on a mass of vultures mountain and Bhagavad Gita together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom, and beheld those five aggregates also as indeed of inherent nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara. How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that in the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, said this to the Venerable Shariputra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound profession of wisdom, 
to look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those desired aggregates also as empty of nature. Form is empty, and emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomena. There is no eye element, and so on, up to and including no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, up to and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifested, completely awakened to the unsurpassable, perfect, or complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the mantra that already pacifies all suffering, should be known as truth since it is not false. The mantra of perfection of wisdom is declared. Tayata, Bhakti Bhakti, Paragati, Parasamati, Bodhisattva. Shariputra, Bodhisattva, Mahasattva should be trained in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commanded the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Amalavitishvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Shari Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avantyashvara, and those surrounding the Dharmatari, along with the world of gods, humans, sisters, and Nagaras, were overjoyed in high grace as spoken by the Bhagavan. The next page for expelling. Ex extensive dispelling of hindrances. I am all surrounding sentient beings, go over a to the Buddha, go over a to the Dharma, go over a to the Sangha. We prostrate to the great mother, Prajnaparamita, surrounded by all the children and by the assemblies of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the ten directions. I continue on my prostrations to all of you. May these words of truth be actualized. In the past, the Deva King Indra destroyed the Maras by reflecting on the profound meaning of the wisdom gone beyond and reciting the profound words in daily recitation. In that same way, I also reflect on the profound meaning of the Great Mother, Prajnaparamita, and recite the profound words in daily recitation. May all diseases, spirit possessions, bad conditions, all negative directions, that which happens due to past karma and immediate conditions, may all this be dispelled. May it become non-existent. May it be pacified. Turn to page 97 or 98 for the mandala offering. Depends which book you have. 
We'll do the first with the mandala offering in Tibetan. chapter chapter 6 on patience and as we all know uh, this quality of patience is extremely important in our life uh, in terms of our spiritual life spiritual practice as well as in our ordinary life how if we have patience then we can <clears throat> be much more calm and we don't have to be agitated all the time because, because of things not going because according to the way we want all the time and because there are a lot of changes happening around ourselves in the world because of that we don't normally we become very agitated frustrated and angry and so forth to see that and that make us very um, it bring us much more pain than anything else it disturbs our calmness peaceful so therefore to a practice a qualities which can help us to remain much more peace and calm and without being agitated, frustrated, despite things not moving according to the way we want to move. Um, because things doesn't move all the time the way we want. And because a lot of things are happening around yourself which you, are, which you don't uh, agree with, and then again, um, it makes us agitated and frustrated and all these things. So we don't have to be that. And to, the way to 
overcome this agitation, frustration, anger, all these things is by having this quality of patience. So we can see that if we, if we can develop these qualities, uh, we can remain much more peace, calm in our life, no matter what, um, no matter what is happening around ourselves. It doesn't mean that we become passive and don't engage. It doesn't mean that, uh, as I've been reminding all the time, patient doesn't mean that but your mind is not agitated, frustrated and anger. So you can involve and be very active trying to change the things, trying to make things move with much more calmness, peacefulness, instead of being agitated, frustrated and anger. So that is the difference. Um, so, hmm? and so we have been discussing that trying to develop that patience by looking to the situations from many different angles, different perspectives. And so that was what we have been uh, kind of, I need to continue to go um, to do that. Uh, last, uh, last week and maybe week before that we discussed about trying to develop patience of enduring, <coughs> having the patience to endure some level of hardship, some level of difficulty, some level of pain or sufferings. Um, hmm? So that um, we can learn how to endure even the biggest challenges, the biggest problems, biggest pain in our life when we do encounter them, if we do encounter them. Hmm? It will also discuss that out of anger, frustration, anger, agitations, taking someone's lives or harming someone, there's nothing great about it. Because there's nothing about being able to inflict in, uh, inflict harms to your enemies, to be able to take someone's, your external enemy's life. There's nothing great about it. Um, but it's great if you can inflict harm to your delusions, your anger. That is true where inner where the both of us. If we can destroy, if we can harm our own delusions, our own afflicted emotions, our own anger, that is the hero, the true hero. Huh? And we also mention when we are trying to destroy and harm the afflictive emotions, which are the source of our pain, sub problems, and suffering. Uh, it we have to prepare for all the obstacles, challenges. Uh, hardship that we might have to go through. Mentally we have to prepare for that. It's going to be a long battle. Even if, if, even, even, even external enemies, it requires so many people uh, planning, executing and everything. Even despite that, sometimes it's very hard to overcome the external enemies such as some of the terrorists that we see around the world. So, trying to destroy an, the internal enemy, our own afflictive emotions, require even much more than that. 
So mentally, we have to be kind of prepared for the long battles and all the uh, <clears throat> to 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 endure all the obstacles, all the challenges, all the hardship that we might encounter in that um, in that battle. That we shouldn't be kind of have a false expectation that this battle will be very easy. Because when your mind is not prepared for the worst, then when you do, when we do face small challenges, then we easily give up. Um, but if you are prepared for the worst mentally, then even you, even you face a few challenges, it will not be able to, um, yeah, it will not. Uh, you will not easily give up. You will not easily give up. It will not destroy your courage, encourage your courage and confidence. So I think that was more or less uh, so far. Hmm? It was in verse number 21. We just finished 20. Furthermore, the suffering has good qualities. Through being disheart disheartened with it, arrogance is dispelled, compassion arises for those in cycle existence, negativity is shunned, shunned, and joy is found in virtues. Hmm? I just want to see the slightly different translation is the just one word the disheartening. Here the slightly is here it says suffering also has its word. Through sorrow pride is driven out and pity fell for those who wander in samsara. Evil is avoided. Goodness seems delightful. Um, so again, <coughs> it's a practice learning how to be, how, how to be, how to be more economic, um, equanimity towards different experience towards difference. Whether it's happy, it is suffering. You don't have learning how to not to have a attachment to happiness and aversion to sufferings. We learn how to accept both equally with much more peacefulness, calm. Whether it is uh, difficult or whether it is easy, we learn how to accept them equally. So if we learn and try to um, be able to, if we, uh, if we train and learn how to do that and if we are able to do that, then nothing disturb us. Sometimes you face some joy, happiness. Sometimes we face, we experience some pain, suffering. You are not so disturbed by any of them. Sometimes things are easy in our life. Sometimes things are very difficult in our life, but we are still much more peace, calm, grounded, and to be able to accept and to, uh, to continue in your life with whatever situation that is. And you have the incredible patience to endure any of those situations so that it doesn't make you break down hopeless or give up easily. And to do that, we have to change our perspective that the suffering, 
difficulties, those problems, to see them as something useful, something beneficial. So that you don't have aversion to it. If you have aversion to it, then we have aversion to it because we don't like it. Whether it is experience, whether it is situations, whatever circumstances, whatever that is. We don't like it, so therefore we have aversion to it. Uh, so when we encounter that, something which we don't want, something we dislike, something which we have aversions, then it's much more painful. It's much more painful. Mm. Why, we, why do we dislike? Why do we have aversion to that? Because we, we feel our perspective about that experience, about that situation, event, uh, circumstances that is not helpful, beneficial, it is harmful to us. So if we can change perspective and to see actually this experience, this situation, this event is not totally unuseful, useless, or harmful, but it is actually something useful, something beneficial. If you see that, then you have less aversions. You have less dislike to it. Do you get it, what I mean? So if you have less aversion, less dislike to that experience, that situation, then if you encounter that, you wouldn't have so much painful experience. We, wouldn't, we, have, we will have less agitation, less frustration, less anger, and less other painful experiences. Because we see something this is something useful, beneficial, helpful. So that is, we, we have to change that perspective, that understanding. So here, the author, Shandriyabha, is saying, all this suffering, pain, all these experience, situations, also have good things. It's not all bad. It's is from which angle you see it. If you see, if you try, if we try to learn how to see from different angle, you begin to see different things and you begin to appreciate it. We are seeing the things from only one perspective at the moment, from only one angle. And we have not learned how to see same experience, same situation from different angle, from different perspective. And so here he's uh, discussing how to look at the same experience, same situation from different angles, from different directions, from different perspectives. And then, our, then we have better and more broader understanding of the whole situation, whole experience. If you look from only just one angle, one perspective, your perspective is very narrow limited. So here he is saying all this also have positive beneficials. It can lead us to have helpful um, experiences out of it. Uh, so one is that when we, ex when we experience those difficulties in our life, problems, from a spiritual point of view, it is a helpful because of that, then we, before that maybe we think we might end up, we might become very arrogant. Sometimes we become arrogant because things are moving so smoothly in our life. Because things are moving so smoothly in our life, Sometimes we become negative pride and become arrogant, and which is not 
healthy for oneself, but healthy for the others, healthy for the society. When someone becomes very arrogant and when they act that arrogant. So when I'm faced with difficulties, problem, then when I'm I myself is in this situation and when I cannot take care of these problems, there's no reason for me to be me arrogant. Do you get it? So it helps us to overcome the arrogant, dispel the arrogant. Arrogantness. Hmm. I mean, we see very often, you know, in our life or even life of others. People who seem very arrogant. putting down others, looking down on others, almost like bullying others. But then certain bad things happen in their life and they become very quiet. Do you get it? <coughs> it happens in our life. Then they become very quiet. Before they were like, also as they were like most looking down, everyone down, now they can't even kind of, sometimes they can't even look up. Do you get this, what I mean? And that change, situation changes. And so that is sometimes it helps to overcome those, uh, feel, those negative feelings such as arrogant and treating others badly in that way. So from that perspective, it was positive. It helped us to let go of one of those negative, to reduce one of those negative thoughts, negative emotions, unhealthy emotions, and the way we treated others with, out of that emotions. And from another perspective, because we went through that problem, that pain, that suffering, it helped us to understand the pain and sufferings of others who are going in similar situations or even worse situations. And with that understanding, it allows us to cultivate love and compassion for them. Isn't it true in our life, you know, sometimes when people, when we, it's, it's very different experience. When I go through that experience myself, then I'm not going through myself, I can just imagine what it might be. There's a huge difference, huge difference. We can imagine the pain, the suffering they are going through, but it's really very hard to really feel that pain and suffering because we have not gone through that pain and suffering ourselves. I was just imagining, I mean, like, um, like, Just, uh, let's say, uh, uh, there are a lot of reports um, uh, in Nepal, a lot of people are so still, after eight days, so scared and afraid to go in the house. Mm. And some of them, the moment they put their in the house, they, they started to shake, you know. And sometimes for us, it's a little bit hard to understand because we have not gone through that experience. If I went through that experience that I was in the house and it was shaking crazily like that, and then only not that after that aftershock, more than hundreds of aftershock continuously, then probably I will understand how they feel it more than from just imagining uh, and seeing seeing, you know, uh, such person is not strong enough. Do you get it what I mean? Sometimes that is our, uh, because we have not really felt that ourselves. So, also you often see, you know, a lot of people who, 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 who in, 
who venture into helping others, uh, in, uh, especially a lot of people, they try to help because themselves went through a certain difficulty in their life, they lost someone due to cancer and all the pain that they went through or because they themselves went through that, so they understand that pain suffering, so they try to help when they have opportunity to help in that situation. A lot of people, who, because they have gone through that situation, they really understand that pain, that problems, and therefore, so what it is saying, it was painful, yes, absolutely, it was painful, it was painful, it was not good feeling, um, it was not the greatest, but because of that, it helped you to develop more understanding of someone's pain. Because of that understanding of someone's pain, you, are, you begin to develop some sense of care, love and compassion for that. So it helped you to develop that incredible quality in yourself. Loving compassion, caring, understanding others' pain. So from that perspective, it helped. If you haven't gone through that, probably you will not understand their pain. Because you have not really truly understood their pain, probably you will not have that love and compassion that we have developed now. So, it was painful, but it led to an incredible good result, positive result. So from that perspective, that situation was very helpful, uh, useful. It helped you to grow up and uh, develop a much, uh, um, much more as a person, as a human being. Yes? Yeah, this, this isn't as profound, but I once, once I worked in a cancer, with a cancer doctor. We had a cancer clinic I worked in. We also saw some healthy patients. And sometimes we'd be giving chemotherapy and some healthy, you know, healthy people that didn't have cancer would call because they threw their back out like their back was hurting. And this doctor was very rude because, you know, he's, we're used to working with cancer patients, people that were dying were really, really sick. And so he didn't have any sympathy for these people that threw, hurt their backs until one day he got up on a ladder and he was doing some painting or something in his own back went out, started hurting him. And then he came into work like three days later and he said now he understood that what those people were talking about because he was so used to working with people on the edge of life and death that it didn't seem to him important until he did it. To, and he, he himself was, had the same problem. And then he became much nicer. <laughs> More tolerant. That is a great story. Yeah, I mean, that is, I think there is a lot of similar on different level experience in our own life, in the life of people who we saw, a lot of people. Yes? Yeah. yeah, if someone hits me on the head with a hammer and I'm in a semi-conscious state, what are the good qualities in that? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> maybe you have to ask yourself. <laughs> A chance to forgive. Again, I can say my. Again, there are good qualities of that. Whether uh, it makes sense to you or not, again, it depends on us how you take on it. Uh, from from Dharma point of view, some of the true practitioners. They feel great about it because it is a form of purification. And it is not just a theory. Lot of, I've seen a lot of great practitioners who felt great when they faced a lot of difficulty like that, physical or other challenges. And they, they said that. I have been praying in all my life to take on others' pain and give my happiness to others. <laughs> now the result of that practice is really happening because I'm experiencing those pain. 
so they feel the per, the result of their tonglen or other prayer practice has been accomplished. So they feel great about that. Some others they have said that all the practice that I have done is to purify and accumulate, and now this is clear signs of being purified. So they see it is a it's a sign of progress. It's a sign of development in your spiritual practice. So therefore, instead of having a negative feelings, thought they feel good about it. Yes. It's a question of perspective. Oh yeah. How you see it? Yeah, this is whole thing. I mean, the whole practice of patience is changing the perspective. Mm -hmm. If you change the perspective, then you don't have the aversions and right. disliking and all these things because you see something useful, something beneficial. So it's all changing about perspective. So I can't get my iPhone backed up because <laughs> I can't remember my, I can't find my password. So instead of getting frustrated with it, I could change my perspective. Oh, absolutely. I just keep trying and then just put it away and say it's okay. I'll wait. <laughs> mm -hmm. really annoyed. <clears throat> also, all these things are opportunities um, to investigate and learn about ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, before you can, before you can have another perspective on something, you have to kind of know the source of of of, of your suffering a little bit. Mm -hmm. or, or your desire, it can be either, your attachment, mm -hmm. either, you know, and so by learning the source, you're learning about yourself, and, and, and then from that, you, you can see the gift. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, <clears throat> as many of the Kadamba masters, they say, we need to evaluate ourselves all the time in our spiritual practice, how much progress I'm making, how much I'm moving forward, or even as a human being. How am I doing as a human being, as a person? It is important to evaluate ourselves. They say it is important to evaluate yourself than someone evaluating yourself. That can be very, um, uh, what you call, um, unreliable. Someone evaluating someone is unreliable, but I can e evaluate myself and that would be more reliable sources. So when these challenges, those problems come, a lot of time in normal day, it is very hard to evaluate ourselves, a lot of time. Even we try to evaluate, sometimes we think, oh, I'm doing, I'm quite good, I'm, I'm good practitioner, or I'm good, and this and that, because we didn't face any challenges. <laughs> then when we are faced with such challenges, that is when you can see how you react to that situation. How do we react to that situation when we are faced with problems, difficulties, sufferings? If we are able to deal with it, deal with such situation with much more calmness, peacefulness, without much agitation, frustration, anger, then that is a good sign that you are doing well in your practice. But the moment we face any problem, then we will be, we lose ourselves totally. That means we need to work more. So in that way, it's a great evaluator. It's like a, you are giving a test and now you have been saying, hey, you need to study more. <laughs> don't, don't kid yourself. So here is helping us to understand. If, if that situation helps us to understand where we are in our practice and how much more practice that we need to do. So again, that, from that perspective, is a uh, really very helpful tools, helpful tools for us.
Hmm? <coughs> As it's said again here, um, if you really contemplate, why do we experience those suffering, pain, problems, difficulties, from Buddhist point of view, because of our own unskillful, unhealthy, unwholesome actions. Anything more than anything. There can be some there can be some immediate cause and conditions which contribute to that. The main cause is your own karma. Negative karma for those um, unpleasant experiences. Yes. When you say actions, that's like the mind. Both mind, um, uh, word, and. Yeah. So if my mind, the action is like my mind reacting to something, and I, I can't stand this, I hate this, this is really being a pain in the neck, I can't. You know, this mind. But if I um, change the action of the mind and say, well, um, this is a problem. Maybe I'll solve it. Maybe I won't, but it will take care of itself eventually. That's the action of changing my mind. Mm -hmm. You can, yeah. So, like the perspective changing the mind this way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, from 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 the when you talk about uh, the actions of mind is like that. Yeah. So it can be such actions can be motivated by the your mind. It can be a harsh word, yeah, yeah. it can be a very uh, physical, um, uh, physical abuse and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so due to that then we experience sufferings. Right. So when you understand that I'm suffering this because of such cause and conditions, yeah. my own negative karma. Yeah. And therefore, if I don't want this result, I have to stop the cause and condition which lead to that result. Right. I have to stop creating my negative karma. Right, right. So therefore then again, from that perspective, it helps us with this result for us to understand what is the main cause of that and how to cure that main cause of condition so that we don't experience mm. such result anymore in the future. Mm. So it's, it's like kind of like this. You have a one cro chronic disease and you, which you are not aware of because there was no symptom. So then suddenly you have this symptom, this, and because of that symptom, you go to the doctor and see and find out there was something much more deeper level that is chronic. So that symptom of whatever, whether you are throwing up, whether you have fever, whether you have headache, it was painful, but it helped you to understand what was the main cause of that, so that you can take care of it. So isn't that a good that you had that, that symptom, even though it is so painful? Because it helped you to overcome the, the, the main disease. Same way, such experiences are unpleasant, painful, but it is a helpful, beneficial that it helps us to understand the main cause and condition of that, so that we can, um, so we can um, purify all the negative karma that we are creating in the past, and we restrain and refrain from creating more negative karmas. <coughs> and also with that, then also we understand the result which we want. This is the result which we don't want. Pain, sufferings. The result what we want is happiness, joy. And again, we begin to, because when we are suffering, then we also think about the joy, happiness, which is the opposite of that. And then when, if I want the opposite of this result, instead of pain and suffering, if I want joy and happiness, I need to create the cause and condition which, which lead to this, this um, experience. Such experience doesn't come from nowhere without cause and condition. It, has, it comes with cause and condition. So I begin to understand, reflect, contemplate what is the main cause and condition of all this happiness and joy. And then my own wholesome actions, my own positive karma. Then there is a pleasure and joy in creating positive karma.
engage in the positive actions. Engage in because it is you see I it's like someone asked me to help them in their garden for one hour. And it might be a little bit kind of physically tiring, hard. But if they say they are going to pay me thousands for that hour. <laughs> okay. I will normally which will be very painful for one hour, but I will be so glad and so pleasure and joy to engage that half hour because I'm looking for the result which I will get after one hour. Do you get this? There's pleasure in that instead of pain. Because you see the positive result there that you are going to pay hundred bucks, a thousand bucks. <laughs> so in the same way, you understand this happiness, joy, which I really want. If I can create the right cause, condition, a wholesome action, virtue action. So there's a delight and pleasure in engaging your practice. In your practice. Instead of feeling the practice as a burden. A lot of us, maybe the practice seems burden, stress out. More burden, more stress out. Because we don't see that hundred buck, thousand buck. We always see that. <laughs> it's like you are being worked to do without being paid. Do you get it? You are being forced to do work without being paid. Because we, did, we couldn't understand, we have not understanding of the positive consequences result of that. <coughs> so here that is, so again going through that also can be a reminder of us and to do that. So therefore if you look from all this perspective then we understand how those experiences can be very beneficial in long term. The immediate, the immediate experience might not be very pleasant or might not be um, good feeling, but at the same time we know that this is going to bring me something out of it. Something positive will come out of it. So therefore you don't have so much aversion to that experience. <coughs> Strong disliking of the experience because even though immediate, immediate experience not so pleasant, not so Good, but you know out of it something positive is going to come. Positive is happening. So therefore you have less aversions, less disliking. If you have less disliking, less aversions, that means your life will be much more easy, more stable, more pleasant. Mm. Mm. So that is, um, so maybe we'll have a short break there. Yeah.